Yes, uh, I did some more thinking about um, the argument uh, against the 20% bitcoins in the permanent portfolio. Uh, the argument um, that um, I mentioned in the previous video that um, the priority of the permanent portfolio is safety and with a small allocation to bitcoin you have enough. Um, uh, you cannot lose a lot but um, um, that uh, the argument that Bitcoin should actually first prove that it achieves a similar market cap than gold before it can have an equal standing in the permanent portfolio uh, versus gold and the other assets but actually um, this is not uh, a strong argument because as you can see in the permanent portfolio stocks bonds and gold and cash have an equal standing each 25 percent but the market caps are very different eh? stocks have a market cap that's at least 10 times higher than gold but still they have the same uh, allocation so harry brown actually did not uh, design the permanent portfolio uh, asset allocation of each 25 percent based on the market cap uh, he didn't he never even mentioned that in my, from what I remember um, so so okay it's true that the market cap of Bitcoin is much smaller uh, than the other assets but this is not um, an argument to not give it an equal standing uh, because Harry Brown didn't do so either um, so I think that's an argument uh, that goes uh, against uh, this um, and that actually confirms that 20% um, is possible um, bitcoins in the permanent portfolio um, something else is um, well but Harry Brown uh, designed the permanent portfolio based on inversely correlated criteria and so he, he did 25% gold and only 25% stocks because they are strongly strongly inversely correlated um, and that's why I gave them an equal standing and for example with Bitcoin we have no clue huh? if, if it is inversely correlated to any asset huh? um, because the past is so short huh? um, so uh, yeah you could say that uh, in 2011 bitcoins went up uh, from I don't know uh, less than a dollar to thirty dollars and then crashed um, and that that was about uh, the same period that gold and silver went up uh, and crashed uh, that's true but that could just have been a coincidence also because that's only one uh, example the years before that uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, also had booms and busts and gold and silver just went up in in one long ride so I haven't studied it but I don't I think it's premature to um, to conclude anything about the correlation of Bitcoin versus other assets um, and also Harry Brown as I remember it also although he certainly has mentioned inversely correlated um, um, aspects of assets I I don't remember that he was um, that he he designed the permanent portfolio based on proven uh, inversely correlated criteria <laughs> I don't remember that and actually another argument against implementing bitcoin for such a large part is that there is no track record eh? uh, so um, we cannot do a back testing but actually harry brown although he has said when he initially uh, came with the permanent portfolio starting in the 80s uh, together together with um, uh, what was his name coxon that coxon I, I could be wrong so they, they said that they had backtested permanent portfolio but I don't remember seeing any data huh? 
in his books about that. And the, 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 the track records of the permanent portfolio only surfaced uh, at the starting of 2000, if, I, if I'm, I could be wrong, but I think Harry Brown eh, continued to, uh, that's for sure, he continued to promote the permanent portfolio, but on his website also appeared a track record since 1972 of the permanent portfolio, and that showed that it did indeed do very well um, up until uh, he was promoting it 2006, um, and then he died sadly. But um, so, so I think that uh, saying, "Look, there is no, you cannot backtest uh, it with Bitcoin, so it's you cannot implement it because of that." Is also not a strong argument because Harry Brown didn't, although he said he had tested it, the back tests. He never published data on that when he initially uh, designed the permanent portfolio and started promoting it. And he never, uh, so I think it had, it had just a verification function for him, not a design function. Yeah? Um, he verified how it, how the permanent portfolio worked in some back tests, but he didn't. As just to see, I think if it like made sense, like, but the initial design did not come from the doing back tests. Eh? So um, I think that's also another good argument why. Bitcoin can be implemented for 20% in the permanent portfolio. So yeah, right now I'm, I'm, I'm for it and I, I plan to continue to execute that. Um, but please, if you can rescue me from total disaster, uh, I value highly that you try to do so uh, with um, valid arguments. Uh, something else that came up again when I checked with myself was Okay, I have this very fearful part, eh? and uh, this very fearful part um, um, responds with always the same, like, yeah, Mark, but it's too risky, you know, Bitcoin can go down, chances are high that it will go down in the next half year, um, and it can go down a lot, eh? but yeah, like, it, my response is, that's true, but that's also true for bonds. Eh? Bonds can correct a lot if the same happens with German bonds. That just happened with Greece bonds and Cyprus bonds and most of Southern Europe bonds. Uh, then uh, then uh, I, will, I can lose uh, easily 50% uh, over uh, a few days with bonds. Eh? So. I would say a few months. Um, so, and stock markets uh, actually uh, can, can, can collapse anytime also with, um, uh, like they did in 2008, uh, with 60% uh, over a few months, uh, 70 or 65, how much was it? Something like that, more than 50. Um, and gold of course can do that too. So it's true for every asset except Cash, although there are scenarios where that also loses a lot in a short time, hyperinflation. But um, so it's every so I understand the fear that Bitcoin will collapse in value, and it's true, it can, but that's also the case with all the other assets. So, so it's not a valid counter argument to not do it. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.